I got a play button, you guys. <laughs> Guess what? We did it. I'm at 10,000. That's so crazy. You guys, I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I love you in pieces. I most definitely could not do this without you guys and your support, sharing and encouragement and uh, watching those ads and supporting me with, you know, all the things. You guys, I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you guys. Phil was out working, I was on the phone to my parents, having a chat, the kids were there, they were around, Hope kept asking me to check my subscri subscribe account because I was getting closer and closer, we were at 9,999, <laughs> crazy, and then uh, she, she said hit refresh mum and so I did and clicked over to 10,000. Crazy, crazy. And I am so grateful. I got a play button, you guys. <laughs> so I am filming this early morning. My family's asleep. Hopefully there won't be too many people walking in, waking up and needing my attention so <laughs> I can get through filming this video. I hit 10,000 subscribers on Saturday. It's Monday and I am going to try and get through all of these questions. I not only put the request out there for Q&A questions on my YouTube community but also on Instagram so we got a couple so it's good. Good, good, good. Let's start with YouTube. Okay, Ellen Kelly asks, Ellen, I'm going to answer one of your questions because um, the other three or four questions that you asked, I'm actually taping a video for that right now and it has to do with my recent experience on Facebook Marketplace and scammers. You guys, it's not talked about that I can tell on YouTube in relation to furniture flipping so it was something I had an experience, it wasn't a great one and I wanted to share that. So that video is coming out. But one of your questions, do you or have you ever sold anything in a flea market booth? No, I haven't. I would love to one day. You know, the booths have a lot of stuff and a lot of little things in it that are appealing to people walking past. And yeah, I don't know. I don't, I would like to do it, but I don't know if I could. <laughs> so I haven't done and I don't know. I won't say no that I wouldn't do it in the future. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. Liberty Give Me asked, what is a popular style in Australia and have I work in, worked on something like that? And if I haven't, would I? A popular style in Australia is the colonial style and something that represented or reminded me of the colonial style that I have done is the dresser that I did that we ended up keeping for Phil and I'll put a picture of it here and the video, I'll link it in the description. It was a beautiful style, just the older style, the square lines, the mirror, the glove box, everything reminded me of the colonial style that I have seen in Australia. <clears throat> they even replicate that, right? Make newer furniture to look like that old furniture because the very first furniture set that I bought from Freedom Furniture <laughs> when I was in my early 20s was the colonial, you know, farmhouse sort of style, like new but made to look old. And I love that. I always gravitate towards that sort of stuff, you know. You guys know I love the chunky, chippy paint and the textured paint and finishes and stuff like that. I gravitate towards that sort of stuff all the time. Another way I think I took that question is a style that Australians sort of gravitate towards would be the minimalist, modern, clean designs. Um, I see a lot of homes and they're popular in all the home magazines where it's the clean square lines and minimalist and 
very boxy square looking furniture um, but you know like America Australia loves all design loves um, you know all kinds of furniture Esther you are so lovely thank you she left me a big long comment saying a bunch of lovely things thank you so much um, I was blown away that you think I'm in the category of uh, the youtubers that should that have a hundred thousand and totally humbled by that thank you her question is how did I come to leave Australia and live in the US well <laughs> that goes back right to 1996 the year I met my husband I went to America with Camp America and he was a counselor at the camp I worked at and I was a lifeguard and we met and the rest is daytime drama history <laughs> you know those love stories the on off on off then throw in Australia an Australian and an American in there living in different countries and all of that sort of stuff it was it was a it was a lot of drama <laughs> came back into each other's lives got married lived in America for eight years moved to Australia, lived in Australia for seven years and moved back here to the States in 2016. You guys, I've moved far too much internationally. <laughs> it is not fun. Moving across country is bad enough, but changing countries? <laughs> no, no, you guys, it's a lot. Amarani asks, well, first says congratulations and soon it'll be a hundred thousand. You are divine. You are so sweet. Thank you very much. Have I always wanted to do this? And did I have another career before this that I transitioned from? I have always watched home improvement shows, HDTV, all those reno shows, right? Even in Australia, we've got our own reno shows. Love sitting there and watching the reveals and how people take something horrible and make it beautiful. And especially the shows where they do it for free for people that, that really just need a hand, you know? Love those kind of shows. So never thought in a million years that I would ever have a career doing this or a job. I, I don't know. Is it a career? I don't know. <laughs> that sounds official. I love what I do. I absolutely love it. That's, of course, one of your other questions. Do I enjoy it? I do. I really do. But like any other job, some days it's harder than others. But I really do love it. And it's such an honor that, and privilege that is afforded by you guys watching my videos that I can come out and do this. So I've had plenty of careers. Uh, I was a florist. I was a night nurse, which that was my most fulfilling career, I have to say. Being able to look after and help people near the end of their life was so fulfilling and my favorite job. You became like family to them, especially the ones who didn't have any family that visited them. Yeah, you, you became like a granddaughter uh, at least I did anyway and so that was my most fulfilling job. I remember uh, a, one of my um, people that I looked after, he was a reverend and he was a cheeky bugger, I tell you. He was a diabetic but he loved M&Ms and he had a jar in his room that he was only allowed to take like a couple from and have but came in one day and he had like M&Ms all over himself and down the front of him and I was just like... Reverend, have you been into the M&M's? He was like, no. I was like, you have, look at you. And uh, he was a cheeky bugger. So that was my most fulfilling career. But like I said, I've been a florist, night nurse, administrative assistant for lots of different kinds of companies. My most recent job when I was in New Jersey, I was a housekeeper for a camp for five years. I was also their waterfront director every summer. And I was a lifeguard instructor as well. I had my certificate to be able to teach that. And anyone who's done housekeeping knows how labor intensive that job is. And I was the year round, the only year round one. So it was, a, it was a lot of work. And when we decided to move here, Phil was like, you know what, you should just go in and do this full time. You love it so much and just go for it. And so Phil really encouraged me to just go for it. That's sort of my transition from a regular job, a regular paycheck, which I have to say 
is really hard, uh, you know, not having that paycheck every week. But this is also a career that I absolutely love, love doing and have the full support of my husband, which is just amazing. Uh, Darcy asks, how do I think through a flip that is worth my time, excluding YouTube? A piece is worth my time if it's priced right. Sometimes Facebook Marketplace people at the moment get a bit cheeky and they're charging a lot of money for pieces of furniture that should have no business being charged that much money because of the amount of work and time and materials that you have to pour into it. So it's got to be priced right and it can't be too damaged. If I'm having to replace, do a full replace of a top, then that's a lot of money and if, if it starts ending into my profit margin then it's not worth my time. You just have to take into consideration do I have to do a lot of changes? Is this just a simple you know prime paint change the pools? If it's that and it and it's price right and doesn't smell has no mold then yeah it's worth my time. Anything outside that it's not that I don't sh that I shy away from damaged pieces but they have to, if they are really damaged they have to be free or <laughs> near free like way under but you know like I said Facebook marketplace people are getting a bit cheeky lately and charging crazy amounts of money have I grossly misjudged how much I could earn on a finished piece not too much when I price my pieces I sort of price them at a reasonable amount and you know Facebook, market, like I said, Facebook Marketplace people are looking for a deal so you sort of just give yourself that buffer when you're doing the price to make sure that if you do come down to give them a bit of a bargain then it's not eating into too much of your profit because at the end of the day the profit is what you pay yourself for your time. Because you're going to have to take out costs of materials like the paint and the top coat and handles and any bases or pieces of wood that you use and as well as how much did the piece originally cost you. So once you deduct all of that, whatever your profit is, is your hourly rate basically. And not only that you guys, if you're a legitimate business and you're filing taxes, you have to take a massive chunk out of your profit. <laughs> and put it aside for the IRS and that's just the reality of selling pieces like this because I have no intention of going to jail. <laughs> I'm gonna give the tax man what he's due. Oh thank you, you love my video, she loves my videos and my detailed explanations. Thank you. Kenga! Hi lovely. Okay, is there a piece I intended to sell but just couldn't part with it? Oh my goodness. Yes, like so many times. Uh, when I was in New Jersey, I was doing a buffet and at the very beginning of the video, I said to you guys, I'm keeping this one. I ended up keeping it, but recently it's been kicked out of the house because I'm going to make it over for a video because I replaced it with something else that I love better. <laughs> so I did it again on that red stenciled piece that I love that piece it was beautiful it wasn't selling and I was like you know what okay I'm gonna keep it and so I'm using it currently in my entryway okay Brenda Barber how did I get my start in furniture flipping and I talk about my dad a lot what did he do okay I got my start because I was doing housekeeping watching the Renault shows and Phil was like you need to do this just give it a try you paint our furniture just try painting a piece of furniture and selling it and see what happens and so I did and I sold it and I was hooked that was it I was like yeah I need to keep doing this and then Phil suggested I do YouTube you know I was flipping furniture doing the YouTube videos homeschooling my kids working full-time it was a lot you guys and not only that, my full-time job was a housekeeper, so it was really labor-intensive on my body, and so is flipping furniture. <laughs> so, you know, um, physically my body was just reaching its limit, I think, is a good way to put it. And when we moved here, Phil was like, you need to just do this full-time and let's just see, see how it goes. And so we're still testing the waters 
sadly because of the economy that we're in at the moment and things are really tough um, and you know basic necessities are expensive petrol and food and that sort of thing so buying furniture is a bit of a luxury so because of that the nature of that furniture sales have been really slow for me right now and so we're just we're, we're seeing <laughs> you know if I can can keep doing this but for right now yes I we are keeping on this road dad okay so dad is a carpenter by trade in his younger days he built houses all over it, Australia and then mum and dad were hippies <laughs> and so they traveled across America you know together working on ranches and stuff like that dad doing building mum doing waitressing and that sort of thing so dad did that in his younger days when we moved back to Australia he then became a businessman for a lot of my growing up years and then more recently towards the later half of his life <laughs> he's gone back to the Renaults and he does a lot of small renovation jobs for people and um, handyman sort of stuff and when we lived in Australia before we moved in 2016 that's what I did I helped him and so we would paint businesses and houses and things like that together and he would sometimes send me on a job and I would do it on my own and then he'd join he'd go do another job he was super busy and so we were working together that way so I really loved it and miss miss him and miss doing it and so yeah anytime I talk about my dad is because he's had such a big influence on me and my repairing and doing all, all of this sort of stuff. Angie Smith, where do I get my ideas and inspirations from? Pinterest. I Pinterest my little heart out. Anytime I have a piece, I just, you know, scroll through endlessly at night and, and or during the day. Not only that, you know, the furniture flipping community that I'm a part of, other flippers, they inspire me. Taryn from Elegant Upgrades, I'm so inspired by her. Jody from Decorous Vintage Designs blows me away with how she finishes furniture. She is amazing. And then there's Debbie from Debbie's Design Diary, the owner of DIY Paint. She's so honest and how she paints her stuff is just mind blowing. And then, you know, of course, Cristana over in Bella Renovare. There's just so many very talented people to watch and learn from. And then, you know, you, I go to the a swing to the other end of the pendulum, pendulum, pen, whatever the word is. <laughs> and I watch like Jay and from Flipping Drawers or Barry from Mad City. And uh, is it Dashna? Anyway they restore pieces and so I enjoy watching that too but it's a whole broad spectrum right the painting furniture to the restoring furniture it, there's enough room for all of us and I get inspired by all of those people and more how did I get my start I think I probably already really covered that haven't really got any new information there <laughs> my favorite piece of furniture so far has been the oak hutch that I made over I love that piece it is beautiful brings me so much joy every time I go into the house the worst piece that I've ever made do you guys know what it is before I even say it <laughs> the green beast I was so annoyed at that piece I after a week of working on it it it, I didn't finish it so I put it aside for a few months and came back to it a few months later and finished it up but it ended up turning out really lovely in the end but I tell you what it's why I don't like MDF and that's just a personal thing I know that'll ruffle some feathers but you know it's just my personal opinion how much time am I willing to spend on a piece sort of answered that already a week just the nature of YouTube if you can't really spend too long especially if you're working on it every day on a piece and then be able to film it edit it and get it up for you guys 
So I really try and make over my pieces in a week. If it takes any longer than that, then it starts eating into my profit margin because it means I'm spending more time on a piece of furniture that I'm not going to get more money from and, and not working on my next piece, which will also bring me in some money. I hope that makes sense. Um, what's your favorite piece that you like to finish? Solid, I love solid wood pieces. Love it. Don't always come across it. We get a lot of veneer in this business and um, nothing wrong with that, but I just like solid wood pieces. K March. It's probably been asked, but how long have you been refinishing furniture? About two years, maybe a bit more. No, definitely more. I think it's like two and a half years, maybe. Anyway, well, as a business, I've been doing it for two and a half years, but I have been refinishing furniture way longer than that. You know, that's how a lot of people get started. They do it at home and then they try doing it for their friends and then they, you know, it's a progression and then you try doing it to sell it. So that's how that went. Doesn't it take much longer to redo a piece and videotape it? Yes, it does. In my early days, it definitely took me a lot longer. I went a lot slower. But I think now, because like, and I think a lot of furniture flippers would say this, if you didn't edit all the footage that we take of flipping a piece, we would have enough video for like days, <laughs> I, I think. So a lot gets cut and thrown on the cutting floor. I think I've gotten a, a, a lot more efficient in my most, in, in recently, in how I film and what I film and I don't film you know, for as long, I just do a shorter, shorter shots on different angles and that type of thing for you guys. So I think I've got a bit better. There's always room for improvement. Um, I watch, like I said, those other guys who um, inspire me not only just in painting over pieces, but how they, they how they film. Like Barry is like the king of filming like how he films is just I just sit in awe of his editing skills and his filming skills <laughs> okay that's it for my YouTube community all right I also put stuff over on Instagram Jen's upcycles asked are most projects commissions or are most pieces things I find for my own vision sadly I've only had two commission jobs <laughs> Uh, it's not for me not trying I definitely try but and there have been a lot of people that inquire but they sort of just die off and lose interest or something I don't know anyway so I've only really had two commissions a bookcase that I did in New Jersey for a friend and that gray corner piece uh, that I did for somebody here so the rest of it are just pieces that I pick up that I would like to make over and think that I can flip for a good profit and film for you guys. And so that's the, that's a majority of the pieces that I make over. How long have I been flipping furniture? That's from Baba6306. Already kind of covered that. My friend Leslie asked me, uh, what is your favorite piece to make over? Kind of, did I answer that already? I don't know. I filmed this a couple of times <laughs> for uh, many different reasons, but the oak uh, hutch is my favorite piece. I love that piece. It brings me so much joy when I walk past and look at it. She says she paints outside in 90 degree temps and how can she keep her paint from drying with brush marks she has no other option and that's true for so many people you know for whatever your living situation is it doesn't allow for you to always have the luxury of a garage space or whatever so i was racking my brain about this maybe if you got one of those like you know tents not not like a tent but the the shade with the metal legs, like if you got that, that would shield you from the sun and then mist with water. If you're using paint like Dixie Bell, that reacts well with misting it first while you're painting. Oh, and I recently, last week's video, I made my own paint out of latex paint and ca calcium carbonate and top coat, right? And it was a really thin consistency 
but it had no breaststrokes. It, it even surprised me. And so maybe doing something like that, creating your own paint, if you're not using Dixie Belle paint and um, you need something that has no breaststrokes, just experiment, making your own paint and then giving it a go on a test piece or an old piece of wood or something and just seeing how you go. I would stay away from, even though I love them, the clay based paints and the, the clay chalk based paints, they're more of a textured paint, right? And unless you're after brush strokes, though, I would just um, use those paints for your more artsy kind of pieces. I hope that helped you. Alling Dog, Catherine asks, could there be another job? Uh, could there be any better job than working with your hands and creating art? No, Catherine, this is a fabulous job. I do love it. It is a lot of work, but I absolutely love it. I mentioned it before, definitely a fulfilling job for me was being a night nurse. So that's probably, those two are head to head in my opinion. <laughs> Jen's Upcycles again says, hi from Canada, would love to hear your startup story, love your work, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I already, already kind of covered that, so thank you. And that's it, that's it you guys. Okay, a couple of things you guys coming up in the works, I've hinted at them. I am a DIY retailer online. So what that means is that you'll be able to go onto my website, order DIY paint. It will be shipped to you from the warehouse straight to you. I'm so excited. You know how much I love that paint and uh, I'm ex just excited to be able to offer that to you guys. I also mentioned in a video that I'm going to be offering a service, a, it'll be a paid service you guys, where you can jump on a Zoom call with me and I can talk you through any stuff that's happening with you and a piece if you need some advice or um, want to talk about something furniture related. That service is up on my website as well. If you want to head over there, I'll pop the link in my description. I'm thinking about a couple of things, merch and uh, memberships. Merch might take me a bit longer to work on. I've got to get that DIY uh, paint up on my website and you know, I'm technology challenged. So <laughs> it's taken me a little longer than I, I thought it would to get all that up, but I'm working on it. So yeah, it's gonna take me a minute or two to get the merch um, up there as well, but, and memberships. It's also something I'm thinking about. I'm not sure that I can uh, make it worth your while. That's what I really want to do, is to make it worth your while. I don't wanna waste anybody's time or money. And so I am still thinking about that, but there's a possibility that that might be coming soon. Let me know. What do you guys think of that in the comments below? That's about it that I'm working on at the moment. Very busy trying to get it all done. I feel like, you know, a duck, <laughs> duck's legs, how it just goes a million miles under the water. That's kind of how I feel like at the moment. You guys, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for your support. If you've made it this far in the video, I know you like me and you're interested <laughs> in all the things that are happening for me. And I wouldn't be where I am without you guys. And I am so grateful that I get to come out and do this. Thank you so much for all of your support. Support into my business through my Amazon wish list or buy me a coffee or clicking on those affiliate links. Um, I'm hoping to get more sponsorships in the coming year. Things, not just things furniture related because I know that a lot of people who watch this video don't necessarily flip furniture themselves, but maybe I could get sponsorships from things that would benefit that the everyday person, you know, uh, so we'll see. I'm working on that as well, but I, I, I thought maybe that would be a good idea. Anyway, back to, I am so grateful for all of your support. The watching the ads, I know watching ads is like a pain in the bum. <laughs> 
but I appreciate it when you, you know, watch an ad or two while you're watching my videos because that, that helps. <laughs> it's a free way for you to help. And then of course the super thanks and sharing my videos and that sort of thing. You guys are amazing. All right, you guys, I will see you on Saturday's video. I'm gonna so I am in love with the way this looks, right? The brown, the creams, some yellow. I already have yellow and French linen up there. Video. I've got to quickly edit this one and edit Saturday's video. <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, I got a play button, you guys. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Hope kept asking me to refresh because she had, I don't know which way that's the right way. She had made me a play button. I love my kids. I could not do this, you guys, what I do, 100% without the support of you guys, which I've already said, but I could not do what I do without the support and the encouragement of my family. I am so, so grateful for Phil encouraging me to, to put myself out there. I am an introvert and I am a quiet person. And uh, I know to some you'd be like, what? You are? <laughs> yeah, I am. And uh, so putting myself out there and on YouTube is, was a big thing, is a big thing uh, for me. They cheer me on every day. They tell me that they like the pieces that I do. They're just so encouraging and loving and I'm so grateful for my family. Mum and Dad who support me way far away, uh, watch my videos. <laughs> and Dad giving me tips and hints all the time and Phil. Without him doing that, I wouldn't have met so many lovely people, you guys, and I wouldn't have this opportunity, uh, how you support me and this venture, this journey that I am on, and I'm just grateful for all of it. So thank you very much, you guys. Have a fabulous week, and I can't wait to see you on next week's feeds. Bye, you guys.